Welcome to episode 18 of our weekly video podcast. Um, we've got three interviews for you this week, and the first one comes from a Carmarthen Hotel room. As Ben Cabango teaches Josh and Amy some Welsh. <laughs> you ready to learn some Welsh? <laughs> yeah. I'll start simple. Um, hello, sit or tea. Hello, sit or tea. Sit or tea. Sit or tea. Yeah, that means uh, hello, how are you? So say it again. Hello, sit on tea. Sit or tea. <laughs> <laughs> Sit-oity. Yeah, that's it, that's it. Um, let me think. Hello, sit Yeah, that's it. Hello, that's how it. are you? Alright. Um, but anu we have Josh. We. V. V. Enu. Enu. E. E. Ew. Ew. Josh. Josh. V. Enu we have Josh. <laughs> almost, almost. V. Enu we have Josh. V. V. Enu we have Josh. Ew, Josh, yeah. My name's Josh, innit? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... <sighs> Three and integrate integrate noise noise. Actually, that that's a that's a hard one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll change that up. Three door door. I don't know. Can't even think. What's Manchester? Twin door door. Green door door. I'm from. Oh, right. and then Manchester. Manchester. Mankaniog. 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 Yeah. <laughs> so twin door door Mankaniog. Yeah, Mankaniog. Yeah, that's it. Um, any more little ones? How do you say um, what you're doing? What is it? Beer, beer, teen, nah, beer, toy, teen, nays. Beer, toy, teen, nays. Beer, beer, oi, oi, teen, teen, nays. Beer, oi, teen, nays. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds funny, but yeah, that's it. Um, what else do you want to know? Uh, I don't even know. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's it. It's a busy few months coming up at the venue, and once back, we had a chat with facilities manager Matt Lee who gave us an insight into some of the events we have coming up. Here we are in Ian Williams's office. However, Ian Williams isn't here. Matt, tell us why. Well, TNS have relocated to Hollis House now, so this is my office now, Rev. So I appreciate it. You just call it Matt Lee's office, please. <laughs> well, here we are in Matt Lee's office. We have lots of events coming up at the venue over the next couple of months or so. Let's go through them in chronological order. First of all, we have Gary Barlow. Although, don't get too excited, ladies. It's not Gary Barlow himself, is it? It's not, and it's not me. I get, I, I get mistaken quite a lot for Gary Barlow myself, Rev. But it's not me either. We've got, we've got a uh, Gary Barlow tribute night coming up on the 20th of October. So if you want some tickets, you know where to come. How much are the tickets? £20 per person, cheap as chips. That sounds That's great. Crazy, that is now rough. <laughs> and, and then following on from that, we have a ladies' night. I don't know if I should be asking about this one, Matt. The ladies are going to be excited about this one. We've got butlers in a buff. We've got two strippers. We've got a drag queen. It's all going on. It should be a really good night. So, so, so don't miss out. Don't miss out indeed. And then we have, to bring us back down to earth, some fireworks on November the 5th. Fireworks on November the 5th, the actual bonfire night itself. So if you want some explosions on the 5th of November, you know where to come. And there'll be live music, we've got food, we've got the bars open, so it should be a really good night again. So the fireworks are being held here at Park Hall. Here at Park Hall. People sit in the stand, fireworks from just beyond, I guess. You've got it. We've changed it this year, so the, the fireworks are going to be the other side of the pitch. So you can be sitting in any of the stands and watch the fireworks from the, from the comfort of the seats. And still, while we're in November, we only have the devil himself coming along to the venue. Yeah, this is a scary one. I don't know if I want to work this one, to be honest. So Stephen French, or the devil as he's better known as, is a, used to be a well-known gangster. But he's uh, now a sort of rejuvenated himself and he's been world kickboxing champion and all sorts but he's going to come and give a speech on how his how his life has evolved over time and yeah it should be really interesting but I won't be here because I'll be too scared <laughs> and again how can people get tickets for that how much do they cost so it's £22.50 or £45 for, for a VIP so to meet Stephen and to have a meal with him prior to the prior to the event that's £45 or just £22.50 to come and watch him um, so again online on go to the venue.com and Everything's on there to be able to be purchased online. Well, Matt, we've had Gary Barlow, a ladies' night, fireworks, Stephen French, 
and finally everyone's favourite season of the year, Christmas. Christmas, we love Christmas. It's my favourite time of the year. Uh, you know, having kids, it's such a special time and we want to try to make that as special as possible for everybody down here at the venue. So we've got Christmas party nights, we've got a Christmas fair on the 2nd of December as well where we've got a lot of local stallholders coming into the eatery and we've also got a Christmas party in the function room for the children with Santa's Grotto, presents, Christmas food. So it's, it's a busy time of year for us. It sounds fantastic. Also as well, individual people or groups of people from an office or a factory can come along and book their Christmas party here. They can, so we've got a Christmas party night specially set up for that on the 15th of uh, December where we're going to have fun and games. Uh, I'm going to be hosting, hosting a Christmas party as well. So we're going to be playing Santa and Rudolph, which is a, a kids game where Somebody's going to be Santa and somebody's going to be Rudolph, so Rudolph has to go down on all fours on the floor and, Ru and Santa has to jump on his back, so that should be quite funny to watch some drunken adults playing that game. <laughs> but that sounds fun yeah. indeed. Well, Matt, thank you for allowing us into your office today. We appreciate it very much. That's, that's good. Thank you for coming, Rev. It's good to, good to see you and get the word out there that it's all happening down here at the venue. And indeed, on a serious note, lots of things going on. Check out the venue Facebook page, Twitter account, website. Keep up to date with everything. And above all, get yourself booked in. Don't miss out on the fun here at the venue. And we look forward to seeing you over Christmas and the new year. Staying at the venue, we also had a chat with Rob Hughes. Rob, you're a familiar figure here at the venue. Tell us, how did you first become involved with the New Saints? So yeah, I did start with the football club, uh, with the academy. First entered with the under nines football coach back in 2014. And uh, yeah, that's where it all started. Um, coached for six months and took time off to so, um, just go coaching abroad. And then returned back to the New Saints Football Club, continued me coaching roles, and then ended up working for the venue, unfortunately. So, uh, uh, no, I'm only joking. I've been here for the past two years full time now, so yeah, enjoy it. But we want to come to the abroad bit in a moment. But first of all, how did you get to, well, you're a local lad anyway, so you knew about the venue, but how did you get to know about the position that was available at that time? Coaching, yeah. Um, just three friends. Um, I, I knew Jason, Kenny, manager. Um, we, we just started talking, and just things sort of stemmed from there, really. Um, came down, had a little trial session, knew some knew of the other lads already, so then, yeah, that's where, that's where I got on board. And going abroad to coach, where was that? So I was based in Texas, Houston, for uh, nine months of 2015. So that was a really good experience for myself. And, uh, lots to take on board, lots to bring back. So. OK, well, we know how you came to hear about the position at the New Saints. Yeah. What about Texas? How did that come around? Completely different to what I was used to, completely different to what it is here. Different culture. Um, completely different setup in terms of football. Um, a lot of money in it, but um, yeah, an eye opener to say the least. And, and how did that happen? That was again through uni um, and mates, really. A few, a few friends had done it previously, and it was while I was well, I'd just finished university, and that's where sort of the idea came from. Didn't really want to go into full time work just yet, so you know, try and drag it out a little bit more. So, uh, yeah. from Texas to Oswestry, as you say, Rob, you've been here uh, full time for the last couple of years. Now you do a varied variety, uh, variety of things. What's a typical day in the life of Rob Hughes? Um, picking up the pieces, Matt doesn't do. No, uh, so, look after two leagues. Uh, one's a six aside league that we run on a Monday, and the other is a Friday night veterans league. Um, so, it's just sort of running, 
and organising those two leagues and a duty manager here as well. So that's just day to day serving customers, uh, managing the building. Um, yeah, that's about it really. But well, yeah, no no days like a, a same day. Every day is different, so um, that's probably one of the enjoyable things about the job. That it's not, it doesn't really get boring because you've got different people to speak to uh, and different things to do. So. Well, you've already mentioned the two things that I wanted to talk about finally. The Monday Night League and the Veterans League. Now, both of them have started, but are there opportunities for people to get involved in them at this stage? Yeah, of course there is. Um, certainly with the Six Side League on Monday. Um, look for teams even throughout the season. Um, and if they're not prepared to start during the season, we can always put them on the wait list for season 24 will start next year um, but yeah all, you can always get in contact and declare your interest and the same with the veterans probably a little bit more difficult to get involved throughout the season um, but again that runs alongside a, a typical footballing season anyway so season will end in April um, and then we'll get sorted or get set up next September but yeah declare interest again um, get on board next season. Well the Monday Night League is all age. Yeah. The veterans, what's the limit to be a veteran? So you can enter at 35 plus. Uh, you do limit teams on how many players they can field at a time between the ages of 35 and 39. Um, but if you're age 40 and above then there's no, uh, there's no limitations there. So. Well, well, I'm involved in the Monday Night League, enjoying it very much. Yeah. We've played together, Rob, in the same team, based here at the venue. And the uh, Veterans League also has a, an attraction as well. I wouldn't mind having a go at that. So if someone's in my position, again, just contact you. Yeah, contact me. Uh, even if you're an individual, I can still try, and, well, try my best to find you a, a team to play for. We've got seven teams currently, um, and I know they're always looking for players. That's they don't want to fall short on any Friday when they've got a game. Um, or even, even better, if you've got a team, or there's a group of mates, and you're, you're thinking about setting up a team for the Veterans League, absolutely brilliant. Get in contact again to play your interest, um, and I'll sort the rest out for you. Thank you for watching this week's video podcast, and as always, be sure to check out our website, www.tnsfc.co.uk. Or keep an eye on all our social media for more information.